The Orange didn't let an extremely slow start stop them from putting away former assistant coach Rob Murphy's Eagles of Eastern Michigan by 15. A possible medical red shirt for Sadibi is looming. All that plus ACC play starts on New Year's Eve at 6 o'clock in the Carrier Dome versus Virginia Tech Jokies. We'll see what Joe has to say about that game in his preview. Let's go. fans it's time for the juice nation podcast with sean and joe give us a like on facebook at facebook.com forward slash juice nation podcast all right what's up juice nation thanks for tuning in to episode 46 of the juice nation podcast we can be found on itunes stitcher iHeartRadio, radio google play music youtube and soundcloud i am sean alongside my good buddy joe Joe, how you doing today, bud? Good, man. How you doing? Not too bad. Uh, hey, just want to uh, wish everyone a... I hope everyone had a Merry Christmas and all that good stuff. We wrapped up your Hanukkah. Hope all that went good. Um, ah, humbug. This is the last episode of the year. This is our first full year, so um, from start to finish, so want to thank everybody on the Facebook page and thank everybody who's listened. Uh, listenership is, it, it, it leveled off for football season, but it started to climb, which is understandable. It started to climb back when, when basketball season came on and, you know, we do pretty good for what we are. So for a two man operation. So, <clears throat> all right, Eastern Michigan. Now, I guess what was the spread? 13? We just we just covered that. Um, Eastern Michigan, I mean, they did a good job, mostly in the first half, clogging up the lanes uh, as they, you know, stayed tight on the inside, enforced the lackluster shooting of the Orange to commence. As we saw, it was just brutal in the beginning. Twelve of the Orange's 24 points in the first half came from the foul line. Six of those from Chuck Wu. Uh, and as Cuse went a pathetic 5 for 21 from the floor in the first half despite all of that a win to finish up non-conference uh 11 and 2 record is the best since 2013 um i mean not a lot of complaints i guess just really what it comes down to is in i guess it's like beating a dead horse at this point is the scoring joe yep yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, that's <laughs> I mean, all it is. They can't score, and uh, Rob Murphy knew they couldn't score, so he told his guys to not extend past the three-point line, force them to shoot, and when you got five guys inside the three-point line and no one's extending out, um, which is what they did last year, if you listen to Coach's press conference, because we had the shooters last year to, to draw right. them out, and we just don't have the shooters this year to draw them out. Joe, does that expose? Does that does that say to the nation? All right, this is how this is how you can be despite the defense. Now, I'm not taking anything away from the defense because they played awesome again. I right. think they've they've averaged what 50 points the last two games, letting by. So, um, t- minus that, minus the defense, does 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 the nation take note? Does the ACC take notice and say, well, keep five guys inside the arc? That's what you got. That's what you can do to beat Syracuse until someone starts shooting and scoring from out there. That's what you do. Well, um, the problem is the ACC has a lot of teams with players that have the talent to play them man to man. You know, have them help off of some players that aren't that good on offense. When Tyus Battle drives past this guy or O'Shea Brissett, uh, we're gonna have definitely have some problems. Um, against some teams defensively. Virginia comes to mind, and we play them twice. That's going to be a – we thought last night was kind of a blah, boring game, wait until those games. Um, yeah, I know. So it's, it's going to be an ongoing thing this year until unless somebody else steps up or unless it just gets to the point where Brissett is in, in Howard in battle, I think, is probably there. He's going to have off nights here and there, but – but they just all have the confidence to take over. And yeah. if all three of them just end up being you know, you know, significantly better than what they are now, then I think that they could pull it off. Uh, 
I think our defense is definitely going to keep us in a lot of games. So like we talked about, I mean, defense won that game last night and uh, a mini run by battle. And those are the things that he's going to have to do, you know, to beat, to beat uh, teams. But it's coming down to the ACC play now. So, yeah, you know, in, in finish up non-conference 11, two, like I said, it's the best since 2013. Did I say? Yeah. And yeah. you know, that's really good and everything. And those numbers are great. And it's a, uh, it's a great, you know, it's an optimistic thing to think about. But uh, before we go any further, we got to talk about Sadibi. Uh, now, these college athletic programs, such as Syracuse or any other team, they comply for a medical hardship waiver for players with incapacitating injuries who do not appear in more than 30% of that team's games. So Mm -hmm. what Jim Beheim said is basically they're waiting. They want to rest him for a week. He wasn't dressed last night. Obviously had um, no chance of playing. He was in warm-ups. He said that they're going to wait and see if he can go a little bit this Friday, uh, see what it's like. If he still has a lot of pain, they may wait a little longer, but it's just day-to-day. He can redshirt medically right now at this point, but if he plays any more, then um, that's going to be it. So they're not going to play him unless he's basically 100%. I am not very optimistic right now, seeing that it's an it's the ankle and it's tendonitis isn't something that you just stay off of and get over. Tendonitis is um, it's a nagging, it's a, just a nagging thing. And... Um, I'm just not optimistic. I mean, Joe, help me out. You got you going to shed some light on this or what? <laughs> Come no, on. I mean, Come on, Homer. You're no, you're right. I mean, they shouldn't play him unless he's 100%. Right, uh, right because then they lose him. Basically, if if well, he, yeah. If yeah, he's, if he really can't play at full ca- exactly, if he can't play at full capacity and and we definitely miss him. I mean, it might not be like severely noticeable, but we miss him having um Having our only big man in um, Chukwu, yeah, really, really See, limits us. I think, and I don't think that there's like a time limit in when you have to like put that waiver. I think you could put that waiver in at the end of the year. Yeah, so yeah, Joe, as long I as wouldn't... as long as he doesn't appear in thirty percent of the team's games, he's good. right. So if I'm Jim Beheim, then that's pretty much what he came out and said was there's a chance he might medical redshirt as far as if he doesn't play this year. But considering some of uh, Chukwa's foul trouble in the past, and considering that the backup is Marek, who is not that big in stature. He's a great player, but I don't think... He's not a great him, center. It's, it's what you're Right. And, uh, and just the fact that we are only seven you know, scholarships deep right now without him, I just say, just let him take it however long it takes. To me, it doesn't matter if it's now or if it's in March. If we can get him back, if he's 100%, then... I don't care if he sits out the next 15 games, you know? I mean, it it, it is what it is. Yeah, basically. It is what it is. You just got to let it get better. We would love to have him back. Our, our yep. rebounding numbers are better with him back. Our defensive play is better with him in. I mean, statistically, these things are just facts. So I um, would love to have him back, and I hope – I hope that um, he can he can get over this and they don't have to medically redshirt him and we can use him when it comes down to it. So uh, on from there, on, a, on the good side of this, Pascal Chukwu, he, um, he started the season 6 for 16 from the line. And since then, he's drained 16 from 22. 16 yep. to 22. Um, Coach Griff is making him take 100 free throws a day after practice. Um, yeah. So, uh, referring to Alan Griffin. And, you know, it's obvious. It's worked. Remember, do you remember You remember watching him go to the line. You're like, ah, oh, geez. And then he's just, now he's draining them. I mean, he did really good last night. Um, what did he do, nine for ten? Um, last night he did, he did um, nine for 11. Nine for 11. Yeah, that's not yeah. too bad because he's going to get, Followed a lot. Yeah, because he, they they said I'm sorry. Um, Rob Murphy told his guys to go after him because of his because of his foul woes, which he didn't get into yesterday, and right. because of his foul shooting. So I mean, they told him to do it, and and he did a great job yesterday. Yeah, and that's something that would go a long way with what we talked about as far as offense. Just somebody who can get ten and 
10 points. You know, if Chukwu could be that guy, he'd get 10 points, 10 rebounds, five blocks. You know, I don't think that's out of his realm. And I don't, it doesn't look like a great stat line, but it's, it would, it would go such a long way if that could be a consistent him. Really would. Yeah, a career high 15 points. He grabbed um, a career high 12 rebounds, blocked five shots. Um, his yeah, defense. He had a good the, night. Yeah, he had a good night. Uh, the, you know, his defense could be a lot of his defense, at least in the first half, could be accredited to, you know, Syracuse going five for 21 from the floor and, and yeah. ending, the, ending the first half 24 24. I think you can credit that to Pascal. I mean, so I guess here's my question, Joe. A great game from Chukwu. If he doesn't commit bad fouls, and and he keeps up his keep, keeps up his free throw shooting, and he doesn't have to be pulled intermittently through maybe the first half and a little bit in the second half, is this is this what we can expect if he stays out of foul trouble? Games like this. Yeah, I think so. Um, Consistency, is he stay out of, but is he going to stay out of foul trouble? It's going to be tough. That's the problem, and that's. There's probably the two most important things I feel like that would push this team over the edge as far as being a pretty good team and a definite tournament team would be the fact of, number one, somebody else other than those three have to score in double digits in, in, in the game. And a good, you know, against a good team in a, in a game we need or a game we expect to win. Merrick, uh, Moyer, or Chukwu has to have a game like this and be able to score in double digits and help the scoring out, uh, help those three out, because we're going to need that in those those kind of games. And also, Chukwu staying out of foul trouble, um, because we don't need Merrick in the middle, especially against some of these teams like Duke, North Carolina, some guys, some of these teams that got height um, and size, and they're bigger boys. Like, Merrick's not going to be able to handle that. So, um, no. Those are a couple of things that I think that if we do if we don't get, then there's going to be nights where it's going to be pretty rough. I mean, he played he played 37 minutes last night. If he can play 35 minute 30 35 minutes, stay out of foul trouble, and just push hard for a double double, I think that's going to make a huge difference, and it'll make up for. Sadibi for a, you know if he can if he can do it obviously this is hypothetical if he can do it it will make up for it though yeah a and that's of- another thing you got to be nervous about is all the minutes that everyone's playing um, you don't want some people to get burnt out I don't I, I know that Jim Beheim always says you know they're young kids and you got a couple days before games and you know with the trainer or you know the work that you can do in between with the trainers and stuff yeah, to come back and stuff and that. That. yeah yeah um, that he doesn't think it's a real big issue. And and also he, he talks about with all the timeouts and TV timeouts and everything, it's like every four minutes, you know, the players get a timeout plus all the other timeouts. So he feels like it's not that big of a deal, but remember Johnny Flynn. Man, yeah. He was like the yeah. marathon man, that guy. Right. And there's some guys that can do it. I don't, I just feel like someone like a Chuku isn't one of those guys. No, I would have to agree. Maybe a Howard, maybe a Brissette, maybe a Battle. I can see that, but I don't know about Chuku. Yeah, I tend to agree with you a little bit there, but we're going to need him to step up, no doubt about that. So uh, 30, 30% from behind the arc, Tyus Battle hit two two in a row on uh, the second half to really get the team started on their um, – I'm pulling away from Eastern Michigan and just and just putting that one in the bag. Uh, yeah. 39% from the floor and 76.9, call it 77, from the free throw line. Um, a little better from the free throw line. I, I mean, I'm not I'm not real happy with that. And the other two, obviously, are garbage. Um, yeah, but we shot a lot more free throws than them. <laughs> yeah, we so. did. Actually, I don't have their, their free throws, but... Um, what were we? Twenty for twenty-six. So. They were four, four of six. Wow! Yeah. Holy cow! Imagine right. if that was just turned around a little bit. I mean, I know we won by fifteen, but still. Right. Well, you know. I think just like you said, the beginning of the game, they were playing really good uh, defense, and uh, we ended up figuring it out um, in the second half. Really, it was just battle that went on. I mean, he scored ten straight points, scored sixteen out of his twenty-two points in the second half. So without that and really good defense, I mean, we only held, we held them to 24 points in the first half, and that was pretty good um, defense. In second half, I think what we held them to 
what was it, 23 points. So it was a little bit better in the second half. Um, and obviously our offense was too. So, Yep, uh, finishing up, like we said, at non-conference. Let's, let's, um, let's do this. Finish it up non-conference, a pretty pretty decent non-conference, like best since 2013. I've already said that. The Orange entered Wednesday night with a healthy uh, NCAA RPI ranking of 16. Yep. Obviously, that's going to change um, as games go on, but it could be good. I was looking, actually, last night after that game, I was watching um, Georgetown Butler in overtime. He went to two overtimes, yep. and I was, I, rooting, too. I was rooting for Georgetown pretty hard in that, but... Uh, they ended up they end up losing late. Um, battle, he struggled early, um, and he was a li- he's been a little inconsistent in the past couple of games, which bothers me a little bit. But I think it's just it is what it is. I think he can shake it off. He's one of those players that has the talent to be able to um, pull his head together and shake things off. Uh, Twenty two points. Um, you know, both teams struggled to score and. And, and we just came out on top of that. And, and he, he, his efforts included 10 consecutive points in the second half. And like I said, two of those were back-to-back threes. So when you mentioned uh, 20 for four for um, – had the edge. Syracuse had the edge on the free throw, free throw line there. So um, as we finish up non-conference, Joe, you happy with 11-2? and two? I feel like it should be 11-1, and one, could be 11-1, and one, but – uh, I'm not gonna. No, it would be twelve and one. I'm sorry, twelve and one. Yeah, but I'm not gonna complain about uh, eleven and two. I guess. No, I think with the expectations that people had coming in, fans, I don't think they probably. I would have. I would have taken eleven and two in the beginning of the year, looking at our comp our, at our non-conference schedule and seeing what it's been the past couple of years. I believe last year it was we were eight and five. With the losses yeah. to Georgetown and, and and St. John's, this year being eleven and two and not having a bad loss, I mean it's it's nice to be able to go into ACC play and know that if we do end up on the bubble, even if we have just an average year in the ACC, if we end up on the bubble, we don't have anything in 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 our non conference. Um, that's terrible schedule. That's going to kill us, right? Because exactly. I do believe that St. Bonaventure, they're. Um, they're an experienced team, and they they were on the bubble last year in the NCAA tournament. So, uh, I fully expect them to be one of those teams that ends up coming from the Atlantic Ten, and it's not going to look like a bad loss. And I don't think that Kansas is going anywhere, so that's not going to matter. And hopefully, even though Georgetown lost last night and they had a pretty big lead in that game too, uh, they um they're still I think I believe eleven and two and. Um, is if they can do good in that conference and get in the tournament, then that'll look like a real, um, a, you know, a good uh, road game. So I think I, I like where we're at. I think that especially after the past couple of years, we're in the best shape since like what you said, the 13 and 14. I think that was the year Tyler Ennis was there and his freshman year. Well, his only year <laughs> yeah. we started off 25 and 0, but yeah, um, we lost so, against yeah, I mean, Boston I'm, College. Now being like optimistic, the, the thing is, is I look, it's tough because you want to be optimistic and based the way I always look at it is you just got to get to the tournament. But I just, right now I look at our team as maybe underrated what people thought coming in in the preseason, but I don't look at us like a team that could beat a great team. You see, you know what I'm saying? I can see us as a tournament team right now, an average team, a good team that can make the tournament, but we got to do something. I mean, that offense, you got to have something better than that in the tournament because there's going to be good teams that, that lock you down, you know? Yeah, so. without a doubt. I mean, it's going to be just a struggle shooting, you know, 30% in from from the floor and 30% from, the, from behind the arc. I mean, you know, 30 40% from the floor. I mean, it's just – it's abysmal. Well, it's depressing. It's hard to watch. It's frustrating. I mean, we missed another dunk. Uh, I think it was Brissett. I'm not sure. Not like him, but it still happened. It, it's 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 um, it's nerve wracking to watch them tip ins. They're just not going. I mean, layups. I mean, these are things that should be a gimme, and they're just. They're just leaving so many points on the floor and, and so many missed opportunities so far already this year. It's just it 
something's got to be something's no, got to be fixed. And 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 yet we're eleven and two still. Right, I so, know, but we're 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 really starting to ramp up the competition, be, we, though. There's definitely things that got to be fixed, but with all those shortcomings, to know that you still won mo- most of those games. I mean, we we weren't winning that Kansas game, but, no, but St. Bonaventure, yeah, we we gave we there's opportunities there that we gave up, and you still have to be optimistic of where we've been, considering where we've been the last three years. Uh, I believe what we had a year where we took ourselves out of. Um, even being able to play in the postseason, and that was a rough year. And then we had the year where we a lot of team people didn't even think we were going to be in the tournament, but we get in as a ten seed and then go to the final four. And then we have last year where similar um, resumes the year before, but we didn't make it. But as far as non conference goes, the last three years, I mean, this is by far the best one. So. We just got to hope that we improve on the obviously the things that we can't do right now. And if we can't, then this is what the season's going to look like. And we're going to have losses and we're going to have wins. And hopefully we have more wins and losses. But they're all going to be pretty damn close. They're all going to be pretty close. It's going to be um, it's going to be cardiac cues. And we've mentioned that. But it is what it is. And the defense is excellent. So, you know, they're going to get people are going to be able to 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 out to score from behind the arc good three-point and shooting teams as historically known with with Syracuse basketball are going to be able to put up some points but the defense is good the defense is good I mean I can't say enough about it so uh at least we got that all right six o'clock New Year's Eve uh Virginia Tech comes into the dome and that's on ESPNU as of right now, that's the only one listed on here. I guess that could change. I'm not sure. Um, but the Hokies coming into Syracuse, Joe, give us your preview. The signature Joe breakdown. Go. <laughs> well, <laughs> we're going to be in for it, buddy. Um, I do not have a, a good feeling about this one. Uh, Virginia Tech... <laughs> They are right now actually the number one uh, three-point shooting team in the nation. Oh, it's awesome. Yep, yep. Full of good news uh, today. Yeah, as a as a team, they actually shoot forty-five percent from the three-point line for the season. It's nothing and compared they have, to thirty. And they have seven <laughs> players. They have seven players. Listen to this. They have seven players that average at least thirty-seven point five percent from that. Uh, deep. Holy cow! Seven. Yeah. Yeah. Well, albeit there's a. A couple guys, when I looked at the list... They only um, took two shots, made them both. There's Well, there's three of them that have shot under 20. But, I mean, some of these other guys, their leading scorer, Ahmad Hill, he's shooting uh, f- like 521 this year. He's shooting over five, uh, 50, 50%, 52.1% from the line. Damn. Um, yeah. And uh, Justin Bibbs, Justin Robinson, uh, Chris Clark, well-known names from these, uh, these teams. This is full of... Uh, team full of seniors and juniors i think one freshman gets uh some decent burn uh majority of the guys uh sorry there's just six guys that play a majority of the minutes but uh they're they're pretty they're pretty good so um um 21,925 in the dome last night do you think they can fill seats on new year's eve at six o'clock i think so think so yeah, a conference. I think conference um, play opener um, could be exciting. Could be a good pregame to your New Year's Eve. No, that's kind of the way that I was going to look at it. As it'd be a good thing, you know, go out and uh, maybe get something to eat, and then go hit up the Syracuse game, and after that, go out and enjoy whatever you yeah, planned on doing for the ball drop. You know, yeah, you're sounds out, like a pretty good night to me. Yeah, you're out of there by eight. You hit. You know Coleman's and all the other joints up there. The the blue tusk is that still around there? And then you know. you take an Uber home. Yeah, or you have a, you know, so if you if you have a party to go to, you know, showing up there at eight thirty nine o'clock isn't too bad. So yeah, I mean, I think it's going to be a a good game. Like I said before, even the teams, even the talented teams that come in, um, you know, with our defense, we should be able to give them good games, and it is a home game. This is an away game. Then I would, I, I would almost say that I think that we're going to lose this game. 
And with this one, I believe that it's really just going to come down to the end and how much we can score. Um, I do believe that they're not that big of a team, but uh, they just play so fast. They play hard. You know, Buzz Williams coach team. He's uh, awesome. We've, we've seen it since we were in the Big East with him, yeah. Marquette. So, yeah. you know, he's always had trouble and he's always played, you know, three guard set. And that's that's kind of what they do. Turn so in, Turning shit into sugar. Yeah, and you know they shoot threes, uh, but they don't shoot a lot of threes because they can also take it to the rim. Uh, they can score a lot. Justin Bibbs is, I think, their third or fourth best three point shooter, but he can take it to the rim and, and finish um, six five guard. And uh, that's the one thing about them is that even though they have such a high percentage, they don't rely on it, and they shoot pretty much around the national average of. Um, threes per game but the problem is is that we force our opponents to shoot like a crazy percent of of threes a game like right now i feel like i think they said right now 45 percent of our opponent's shots that they take against us are three pointers it's almost i mean you're talking about almost 50 percent of shots taken against us are like three pointers so that's what kind of makes it dangerous is that that's kind of our weakness and now we're playing against a team who doesn't really rely on it but you know, so that's the interesting thing that I look at is are they going to be lulled into maybe shooting too many threes and it kind of messes up their flow of their offense because they have five guys that average double digits and their sixth guy averages um, nine, almost pretty much ten points. But it's under ten, so it's not double digits. But either way, they have those six guys. I mean, it's, it could be anybody that beats you any night. So who knows maybe uh if we get them to shoot too many threes it'll it'll mess up their average or normal flow of their offense but i think uh, i I think the zone does disrupt flow in general and you know i i i love i love buzz williams but i mean there's been times when coach k hasn't had his guys completely ready for the zone and i mean right you know it's just a matter of of you can prepare for it all you want until you see it in person. I guess is my point is that it's it, it's a totally different ball game, and like we've said, we need to rely on our defense. I honestly feel like this game is vitally important, and and I say that because it's it's we're probably expected to lose, yeah. and if we just go out and lay an egg, um, you know, it's just it's just one of those things where it's like, yeah, well, that's no big surprise there. Syracuse, you know, blah, blah, blah. But the thing to me is as long as they stay in the game and they fight um, and limit their mistakes last night, they limited their mistakes um, despite terrible offense, um, limited their mistakes. And that was another reason they won. So, I mean, it's so important to do that. And I feel like opening up conference play with a win would be a huge boost of confidence to these guys. And I just, I live in Virginia, and I want them to beat Virginia Tech so bad every time we play. So <laughs> it's very important to me. Um, you know, that's all I got to say about that. That's it. <laughs> that's it. So um, any final thoughts, Joe? Um, I mean, like you said, it would be a great win. I don't really – I mean, I don't live in Virginia, so I don't care about that aspect of it. But I just think – we have a favorable schedule this year um, against a lot of the bottom half teams. There's a lot of our duplicate games that we play home and away. Um, so this game against Virginia Tech would would definitely be uh, one of those games that, like you said, people don't expect us to win. So um, like you said, it would just be a nice way to start it off. You know, we're still getting some votes and – some of the what, Associated Press top twenty-five, you yeah. know, and others received voting, so we're not that far away. So, and that was before the last win. It was after the Saint Bonaventure loss. We still received votes, so I don't think yeah. that's going to last too much longer, though. Without winning some good games, the ACC is just hands down the toughest conference in the nation, and yeah. um, we just got to go out there and prove it. Prove, our, prove, yeah. our, prove we can we can handle these guys, you know. So, yeah. all right. Well, everyone have a safe and happy new year. Um, Joe, what are you giving up? Huh? Huh? <laughs> That's what I thought. I said, what are you giving what? up oh, for new year? You got a new year's oh, resolution? For new year's? What do you got? Are you thinking of anything? 
I don't do that stuff. Man. Yeah, me either. I mean, you can only do it so many times and fail before you're just like, ah, whatever. I'm not going to do How about it. this? I'll, um... You can make podcasting great again? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good, man. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> All right. Hey, everybody go out. Have a happy new year. And um, we will. This is our last show for the year. So we'll be back after Virginia Tech to um, look ahead to Wake Forest. And hopefully they ring in the new year. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully Syracuse can ring in the new year on New Year's Eve. So that's it. Thanks for tuning in to episode 46. Go to facebook.com forward slash Cuse Nation podcast. Thumb us up there. For Joe, I'm Sean. We're out. You just heard the Cuse Nation podcast with Sean and Joe.